Um, thank you everyone for being here today. We're here to sign an important bill, an act to prevent abuse and exploitation. Among other things, the bill criminalizes the non-consensual sharing of explicit images, and it expands the definition of abuse to include coercive control. These are important historic steps in our state's commitment to preventing violence and harassment and holding perpetrators accountable. I want to thank the legislators from the House and the Senate who worked so hard to get this legislation done. To Senate President Spilka, I thank you for your leadership and your advocacy. To Speaker Mariano, who cannot be here today. Chair Michaelwitz, Chair Rodericks, Senator Keenan, Representative Mike Day, um, who led the conference committee. We are grateful to all of our legislators um, as well. Representative Higgins and members of the Sexual Violence Task Force of the Caucus of Women Legislators. Vilma Arube, who leads this work for us as the Executive Director of the Governor's Council to address sexual assault, domestic violence, and human trafficking. And all of the advocates who have joined us today and who have been in this building uh, advocating to get this done. Most of all, we thank you Shakira, who we're going to hear from in a little bit, and Caitlin and all the survivors who are with us. You made history, and you've done it in the most powerful way possible by telling your stories and lifting your voices and turning your pain into action. So we are inspired by your strength and your courage, and we thank you for your patience and your effort in getting this done. Um, look, I come to this as a former attorney general and a prosecutor, and now as governor, and we know that um, there have been gaps in laws and policies in this area. We also know that this is a new area in the sense of AI and what is being um, enabled out there, particularly, you know, stories continue uh, to be told about young people and what's happening, too, in this space. And so I really appreciate the decisive action taken by the legislature. It's an honor to be able to stand here and support and sign this into law, because it is legislation that takes necessary and decisive steps to update, to modernize, and to strengthen laws to protect residents of this state. The, uh, the law also provides, importantly, um, in addition to some updates to uh, criminal statutes, the law also provides what we all know and believe is important, educational programming for young people. The need for them to understand how harms can occur, why they're wrong, how to recognize and avoid participating and perpetuating that harm. This law is about stopping violence and stopping harassment. And it also recognizes that harassment and abuse is not just physical, it's coercive behavior. And this is a space where we have seen some of the ugliest, most dehumanizing, derogatory uh, conduct when it comes to coercive behavior. So we've got to do everything we can to eliminate violence, harassment, uh, abusive control, uh, coercement, coercement from uh, our communities. And that's what we, we have now uh, done. And again, I'm grateful to the legislature for their hard work and getting this done. And I'll now invite our Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll to share a few thoughts. Thank you, Governor. It's an honor to be here with the Senate President and so many of our legislative partners for the signing of such an important bill. I want to especially thank the advocates and survivors who gave so much of themselves to this work. And as the chair of the Governor's Council to address sexual assault, domestic violence, and human trafficking, I see the care and effort they put in. In fact, this afternoon, we're hosting a listening session with survivors across the state as this work will continue. They're raising awareness supporting survivors, and changing not only our laws, but also our culture for the better. That's why the educational component of this law is especially important. It creates a diversion program for minors who share explicit images to teach them about the dangers of sexting. It allows minors charged with possessing or distributing nude images of other minors to be tried as juveniles in juvenile court. And it requires DESE, our Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, to earn to encourage school districts to implement age-appropriate instruction on media literacy skills for all grade levels. As a mayor and a former chair of a school committee, that's critically important that we have the tools that we need at the local level. And it's so critical to make sure young people understand the dangers of this activity, especially as the technology available to them is rapidly changing. Another piece that the council and all our advocate partners have worked around is the issue of coercive control, as the governor mentioned. 
This law takes critical steps of expanding the definition of abuse to include coercive control. This is violence that may not be physical in nature, but it is nonetheless still causing lasting harm and trauma. And very often, it's the precursor to physical harm. Making it clear that this behavior is criminal will prevent harm, prevent violence, and support survivors of domestic violence as they move forward. It's so gratifying to see all the work and all the courage of these survivor advocates come to fruition in changing this law. We know there's still much work to do. We can't rest as long as a single woman or vulnerable person is at risk. But we have stronger tools now, and that will, as the governor said, save lives. Thank you once again to everyone who's had a hand in bringing us to this day and making it possible. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce the Senate President, Karen Spilka. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and thank you from the bottom of all of our collective hearts to Governor Healy for signing this bill so quickly. I am looking forward to having many more bill signings in the coming weeks ahead. Yeah. Yes. Here, 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 here. So hopefully th this is a, a path forward. Uh, I'd like to show appreciation and give thanks to Senator John Keenan for his relentless leadership and the conferees, including Senator Eldridge and Senator Fatman, thank Representative Day and the other reps. I know Jeff Roy uh, was, was a big advocate for, for this issue. Uh, thanks to my friend and partner, Speaker Mariano, um, and to all of those uh, legislators who worked on this to get to where we are today but especially to the advocates and the survivors who had the courage, who were brave enough to raise their voices and spoke up. Sharing your stories, having the courage to share your stories and tell what happened, actually your voice individually and collectively made this happen and made this become a law. So we all thank you so much because everyone, every single person should feel safe in Massachusetts. No person, no one's life should devolve into chaos because a private photo was shared without their permission. Each person, no person should ever feel coerced or threatened because of a photo or uh, something that, that uh, is uh, the coercion that uh, makes them do things that they don't want to do. Um, this law is so important because it gives us the tools to make that a reality. We now have the tools, the definitions, and the laws to, to, to prosecute adults who do this. And most importantly, we have the tools and the laws to divert young people who engage in this behavior. Many of them don't fully understand what they were doing. It was, it's wrong no matter what, but at least this gives us the tools to divert them uh, and in the hope so they can be educated on the harm of this situation instead of going into our criminal justice system. Today, we all stand, all of you here today, stand with the survivors, our survivors, and we are making Massachusetts a safer place to live. I am proud and excited to be here and get this across the finish line, but I know that this is not the end, and as we've spoken with many of the survivors, this is just a big phase, it's a phase. There's still more work to do and we look forward to continuing working with you as well. I'd like to now turn it over to Chair Day. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, President Spilka, uh, for that introduction of those words. And I also want to thank uh, the Healy administration, uh, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, for your words, but also for your quick actions in signing this bill uh, into law. Uh, I want to recognize and thank uh, my House conferees as well, Representative Christine Barber, Vice Chair of Judiciary, and Representative Allison Sullivan Almeida for their contributions, and specifically Senator John Keenan, my fellow co-lead in this conference, uh, to move this forward quickly. 
Um, you'd heard the, the administration and Senator uh, President Spilka talk a little bit about the features of this. I won't go over those again other than to say this is a great step forward on a number of fronts for us here in the Commonwealth. Uh, with respect to revenge porn, um, obviously you hear the headlines that we're the 49th state to, to put this into effect. Uh, while that's true technically, we believed we had a fix uh, in the laws under criminal harassment. And so what we did is specify and clarify specifically that revenge porn is criminal harassment, subject to severe criminal penalties uh, for that act. Now giving those district attorneys that tool very clearly to go and prosecute this. I want to highlight one piece uh, in this law that's, that's new, and I believe um, one of my preceding speakers touched on it. Uh, we're dealing with artificial intelligence that's moving leapfrogs ahead of where we are legislatively. Uh, and that happens with all technology. Uh, what we did in this bill is put in specific prohibitions against the deep fake um, actions, which are designed to do the exact same thing as revenge porn, to harm somebody by manipulating their image and putting it out there uh, with an intent to ruin their lives. And so we, we put that into the bill specifically, and the Healy administration signed that into law. Uh, you heard about the teen sexting piece, educating children who don't know the, the ramifications of their decisions in their actions. Uh, these are kids that think it's okay to send these explicit images around of themselves or of others. Uh, thanks to Chairman Roy and others. Uh, this will now be law that these children will be diverted into an educational program unless it's so egregious the district attorney decides to move forward. But the default is going to be education for these kids which is the right way to go. And finally, a brand new element of this law, and I want to thank Jane Doe specifically and all other advocates uh, who stepped up, including my colleagues in the House, to put this forward as coercive control. Coercive control is as insidious as physical harm when it comes to domestic violence. And we are, for the first time, putting that element into the law specifically. It's a huge step forward on the battle to combat and end domestic violence. I'm very proud that the Senate and the administration uh, agreed with us on that and we're now codifying that into law for the first time. That's going to equip our survivors uh, with more tools to go seek assistance and shelter from the court. It's going to uh, allow our district attorneys now to move forward on this type of insidious violence as well. So I'm very proud uh, to be standing here today with all of you. I thank you all very much uh, for your interest in this law. It's a great step forward for Massachusetts. It's a great step forward for the survivor community. It's a great step forward for everyone in Massachusetts. With that, I want to introduce, uh, and it's my honor, because without the survivors coming forward to talk about their experiences, share their pain, and let us know where we needed to move forward, this bill wouldn't be happening. This would not be a law today. So it's my honor to introduce Shakira Robinson, who's the founding member of Together Rising Against Coercion Coalition and the founder of Shakira's Story, Domestic Violence Consulting and Coaching. Shakira. It's a new day on the hill. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't ask my track sisters to please recognize that you're here. Good morning, everyone. It is a great day to be an abuse advocate as we get ready to commemorate the statewide efforts that have brought us all here to bear witness to our governor as she prepares to sign into law H4744, an act to prevent abuse and exploitation. Thank you. Again, I would be remiss if I didn't ask my Shakira Story family to raise a hand, to ask my track sisters to raise a hand. A critical first step in changing public policy is to believe the lived experiences and stories of those whose lives are traumatically changed forever. More specifically, as it relates to abuse victims, survivors, and their families, uh, these processes involve identifying the gaps in services, addressing the unmet services, um, the un unmet uh, services needed in the community, providing equitable, sustainable, and relevant intervention measures for all. By understanding the specific needs of the communities we serve, we can tailor our prevention efforts to address these areas effectively. While these changes need to be built from the ground up, they also need to be happening from the top down. Uh, meaning we must continue to work to change laws that protect survivors of domestic abuse and that protect those who ensure that they are valued and protected by the legal system rather than the disbelief, the interrogation and the re-traumatization, re-traumatization, I'm sorry. 
Shakira's story, domestic violence consultant and coaching has grown from my own crusade to pull myself and my children out of the gruesome controls of intense domestic abuse over the last seven years. Over the last seven years, our experiences have led us to be forced to face the horrors of multiple systems that continue to impact our lives today. We are acutely aware of the value of having mentors and advocates who support and believe you, who stand in solidarity with you, um, who walk with you through these tremendous circumstances. This is a brutal process. In fact, in the coming days, I will prepare to tell my story yet again in trial court as I prepare to once again try to keep myself and my family safe from the ramifications of identifying as a survivor of coercive control and abusive litigation. Had H4747 H4, H4, been in place during the height of my attempts to live a life free from abuse, I don't believe I would have had to deal with the abusive litigation, the loss of employment, the fears of not knowing what was the next uh, step, and every time seeing an officer and wondering what new false allegation was next. I digress to say that today is a new day on the Hill. On behalf of TRAC and Shakira's story, we want to thank the legislators. We want to thank the lobbyists. We want to thank the advocates. We want to thank the survivors turned advocates for all of you have helped to raise awareness that made this all possible, that we have accomplished. What we have accomplished today is no small feat. And together we rise to make large scale changes for survivors of domestic abuse by changing laws, by breaking down stigmas, increasing awareness and building connections. Today, tomorrow and forever, we rise above coercion and we make room for those coming behind us. Today we put Massachusetts on notice due to TRAC and all of those who support us. Legal systems that believe us that survivors are being heard across the entire state of Massachusetts. Thank you. You are so awesome, man. You are so awesome, man. Thank you. I want to. I want to absolutely, absolutely, I love you. I have the honor and the privilege to introduce Caitlin Spencer. Thank you. Hi, I'm a survivor of image-based sexual abuse. I found out I was exploited four years ago. In May 2020, I was informed there were two sexual videos of me posted on a pornographic website that I did not consent to. One of the videos I didn't even know was recorded but to come to find out they were actually first posted in 2010. It's now been 14 years since I've been all over many different websites with millions of views. Right away, I knew I wanted justice, but then I discovered there was no law in Massachusetts to protect me. Though I did try to charge my exploiter, my case was dismissed. It was an awful two-year ordeal with going to court numerous times, trying to get through mortuary school and my apprenticeship. I thought if my school or work found out, I would get kicked out and fired. I truly believed my life was over. From this, I was diagnosed with PTSD, CPTSD, anxiety, depression, and an eating disorder. And I'm not the only one. I jumped into advocating less than a year after finding out, and I've met some of the most amazing survivors, advocates, support, just many incredible people, so I'm not just speaking for myself. Many of us survivors get these diagnoses, health issues, we lose money, jobs, spouses, partners, friends, family, and most importantly, our privacy. Since my case was dismissed, my only justice would be this bill passing, so no one has to go through what I did. This ruined a huge part of my life, but I stuck to my true self, I fought hard, and I am a face for others to see that we can make it. Unfortunately, others are gonna be exploited, but now there is something in place so those who are affected can come forward to get the justice they deserve if they choose to. It doesn't make it any easier, and I'm here for any of you who have experienced this um, and need support. This isn't something to go through alone. I filmed for a documentary in France, that aired in France, and I worked with an amazing journalist named Marie. She told me a quote, positive scars. What happened to me is my scar, but I met so many fantastic people along the way, this, oh, I'm sorry, along this journey that are fighting by my side and I've accomplished so much to help show light to this issue and to make a difference. That's the positive, the good that comes out of the scar. This bill has been in the works long before I even knew I was exploited, but I knew I had to help along with many others to push this to pass House and Senate. This bill being signed 
is my justice. This is our That's justice. Right. Thank you, Governor Neely, for signing this and allowing me to be a part of this victory. Thank you. Well, many thanks, um, particularly to Caitlin and to Shakira for sharing their story, and we wish them and their families continued strength and know hopefully you'll feel better in the coming weeks knowing that you have the full weight of the Commonwealth behind you and others out there will as well. And with that, we'd like to invite you all for the signing.